and you're listening to Morning Report and to this special on the flag referendum. Should we keep the current flag or should we change to the silver fern design? The voting packs are in the mail. It's time to have your say. You can watch this debate over the next half an hour live streamed on our website rnz.co.nz. You can also watch it on Freeview Channel 50. We've also set up a special phone line so you can give us your views. That way, record your message. The number is 0800 420033. 0800 4200 33. We'll be playing those messages throughout the programme this morning. Shortly, we'll be going to our guest panel this morning. But firstly, we've been out canvassing the views from regional New Zealand. Here's what people think. My um, family members, uncles and stuff in the 60s fought Vietnam um, for this flag under yeah, America. They, um, my grandfather fought for this flag in World War II. My great-grandfather fought for this flag. Um, he's Daniels in World War I. Um, and prior to that, in the 1840s, my descendants in Tuwharetō, Manyapotoro, Kawai and Waikato fought against this flag. But we've accepted it 150 years on, um, and it really touches me to think that my culture and my history can be wiped away so easily. The alternative flag, for sure. Because we've been overseas um, to international sports, particularly 2007, the World Cup, and it um, obviously stands out, the alternative one, that it is New Zealand. Um, I think, like a lot of people, it is identified with Australians. And this is the one chance we've got until New Zealand becomes a republic to make a change. The alternative flag at the moment represents us as a multicultural country more now. I think that I support the existing flag. Well, I think it shows that we're part of the Commonwealth and that means that we then have the support of the other countries that are a part of it. It's about time for a change. I like the look of it. It uh, depicts New Zealand as I see it and the old one's time to go. Well, the other one just hasn't had enough thought put into it. Like the people who were on the selection panel weren't the people who should have been on the selection panel, and I don't think enough thought has been given to the whole process. So if I had more time, I may support the new one, but uh, or a, a new one, but at the moment I'd rather just stick with what we have. Well, I do believe that we need a new flag, but I, th I think this whole thing's been a little forced. The whole thing's become horribly politicised, and it just it drives me nuts. The past generations have fought underneath that flag, I think it's very important to our country. I feel like that money doesn't need to be spent on a new flag. I'm not really a fan of the alternative design. Personally, I prefer the current flag, um, and that is because um, I have spoken to a lot of older people. I work with a lot of older people, and their views on it are something that I agree with, and that is people that have fought for the flag and what our country means, and. Um, I just think that we need to stand up for it. Some views from regional New Zealand there. And earlier in the week, I went out uh, to the streets of central Auckland and found out what people think there. This is what I want. This is what we need to keep here. Mm. This is yucky. This one, no. No, no tea towels. No. This one, no tea towels. Not no, no, naughty. No, no, no. That one, <laughs> naughty. No, no. Don't like it. We don't like it, do no, we? No, I don't like it. I don't think it. No. I don't think it's a good design for a flag. I don't think it goes with my eyes, so... Um, <laughs> Clearly, this one does. <laughs> How are you when I present you with that? Uh, not great. You don't like the silver fern one? I don't, because I don't, A, I don't think it's a silver fern. Um, I think it's complicated and a bit trite. Don't actually like our original flag, but I think we've missed a great opportunity. Ah, so you're one of the people who wanted change, you just don't like the alternative option we've been given? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I'll probably vote for the original and know that in my lifetime it probably won't change. What are you going to go for? Because oh, we've got go here, here are your options. Here are your options. You want to hold that? Yeah. Yeah. Is that your pick? Oh, this is my pick, eh? I didn't vote in the last one because, you know, I was pretty good this one. Oh, you want. So you, you're going to stick with the status quo? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What is that? I like New Zealand. And this is kind of when I look at this, I think of New Zealand. Aussie, change your flag. <laughs> change your flag. I do like the idea of the silver fin. I really love that but I also respect the tradition. So uh, I'll make my mind up and uh, it'll be on the day. That is spoken it's like very... a politician. You can't even give me a straight <laughs> answer on the flag. For me now, give us a break. Uh, yeah, so uh, definitely open to the change. So some well-known voices there, some well-known names, some not so well-known. But in Auckland, nearly 40% of people were born overseas. 
What do those new New Zealanders think about whether we should change the flag? Okay, well here, here are your um, here are your options. Yeah. Here, here are your options. What, what, what do you reckon? Uh, according to Winston Peters, I can't vote. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because apparently I'm an immigrant or a migrant. How long have you been here? Uh, th just over 13 years. Oh, right, so you've been here well long enough to vote for the flag. What are so. you going to do? Uh, I'd rather keep the original. I don't. I think. I, imagine a five-year-old trying to draw that in class. Yeah. <laughs> is that your three shoulders? Well, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just not practical, really. So you like the silver fern? Yeah. Has that got your vote? Are you going to vote for that? Yeah, I'm going to vote for that. We don't have to spend so much money on just changing the flag. We are not even changing our constitution. So it doesn't matter. We don't have any, like, we're not changing the legal system. So why we are changing the flag? So a range of views there, and a range of views uh, joining us this morning. We have uh, Winston Peters, the Right Honourable Winston Peters, who's in favour of keeping the current flag. Thank you for joining us this morning and welcome. Singer and blogger Lizzie Marvelly is with us also in the Auckland studio. Good morning to you. David Slack, the writer, is with us, as is Chris Mullane, is a Vietnam veteran who's actually got some interesting views on the flag. And joining us from Wellington is the National MP and Minister, Maggie Barry. I'll start with you, Maggie Barry. Thank you for joining us. You've been, I guess, one of the principal advocates in the National uh, Party for changing the flag. Set out the case for us. Why the case for change? In a New Zealand modern society where we are multicultural in a way that we weren't a hundred years ago when we had the flag we have currently, the silver fern to me unites us all. It is about who we are as a people. As a Minister of Arts, Culture and Heritage, I visited the sites of the battlefields of Europe where more than 18,000 of our men lie. The silver fern is our distinguishing characteristic. It is the motif on all of our memorials. So it unites who we were, our past, and also a shared future, not just one that involves the Union Jack. I have nothing against the Union Jack as such. I think it is part of our colonial past. But for me, the Southern Cross locates us in our hemisphere. The colours, I think, resonate with New Zealand and for me it's always about the silver fern. It is our symbol and I think it needs to be on our flag. Well there you go, Winston Peters, uh, the Union Jack, uh, colonial past. Uh, well if you don't understand our history and you don't understand our present situation of being in a commonwealth of over 50 nations and how big that is in a world of 200 nations, uh, then you probably dismiss our history as not being important. The second thing is, I don't think Maggie would have got very far on the, on the garden show if she demonstrated the kind of colourblind understanding of this issue that she currently is. It is not a silver fern. I've seen those grave sites offshore and the silver fern is depicted because that is the replica, uh, uh, the accurate well, replica. Is it, well, it is it's, a no, silver it's, fern, it's roughly, white. isn't it? No, it's not roughly. Look, it's what's, like botan a fish what, skeleton, what's really? botanically, what well, looks like a ponytail actually, <laughs> in the air. I think uh, if you're going to go uh, botanical if, if, on a swim, you finish, probably need to get a fact check. I'll tell you this um, fact, The maple Maggie, leaf for Canada have, is also a stylized version. No, no, if you want to talk issue. about botanical issues, Winston, you're out of your desk. Maggie's here talking for John Key and he's trying to defend himself. The botanically unique silver fern, rather, to this country, is the silver fern. That's why the first native rugby team chose it back in 1882. It's what's unique. The flag that fern that she's got, you can find any desert in half oh, the world. Okay, and I will come back Wrong. to you. To, I will come back to you, Maggie Barry. But I'm interested to bring Chris Mullane into this because we hear about tradition here, and we often hear the argument put forward that our soldiers died under this flag, and that that's tradition is part of the reason to hold on for it, to it. Now, you're a Vietnam veteran. You've got an interesting view on the flag. What is it? Okay, uh, let's just correct a couple of facts first of all. Um, all military funerals during World War I and World War II, by government direction, the casket was draped in the Union Jack. No mention of the New Zealand flag, which existed at the time. By order of the government at the time, both World War I and World War II, all military funerals under the Union Jack. So what's the history about this flag's been around for so many years? We ignored it in the past. So you want to change? You want Absolutely. And the reason I want to change is when I served uh, in the United States as a New Zealand officer for a couple of years, uh, the custom there is to put outside your, your home on your front door porch uh, your national flag. A lot of Americans do that. They're very patriotic. So we used to put out the New Zealand flag. Passers-by would say things like, G'day Brits, how you going today? Or G'day Aussies. And in the end, we put out a black flag with a silver fern on it. And they said, oh, you're New Zealanders. 
All right. So, so there's my message. So you want to change. Uh, let's go somewhat uh, down the, the age spectrum a little bit to <laughs> Lizzie Marvelly. Uh, no disrespect to either of you. It's but it's okay. interesting, the dynamic here, because Chris Mullane's saying, let's change. Yep. And uh, here you are, a younger singer, blogger, mm -hmm. perhaps a progressive thinker, if <laughs> you like, and yet you are making uh, the case to keep the current flag. Well, why is that? Well, I think... If we're going to change the flag, then it has to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And frankly, this design that we've been presented yes. with is nowhere near good enough to represent us. You know, And it's a real insult uh, for me as an artist to all of the visual artists and the designers in this country who come up with amazing things. I mean, you know, even in film, look at where to workshop. You know, we're really world leading in this kind of stuff. And to come up with that... It's just not good enough. <laughs> well, let's just let's cut to it because I mean, we, we and we will talk about process and politics and everything. But what do we think? What do we think of this design, the, the Kyle Lockwood design? For those listening on the radio, holding up that uh, the flag, we all know it pretty well now. David Slack, what do you think? It's a dismal. I really don't like it at all. I think it's a failure of design. And in fact, designers say that having a fern on a flag is intrinsically tricky because of the way it tapers away. So it's very hard to make it work in the way that you can't with the, say, ma maple leaf, which is symmetric. But, but more to the point, it's just so... It looks like clip art to me. And, and it's badly, badly proportioned. And I'm thinking, you know, if the French had done what we're doing here, they've what they'd have it would be a croissant on the tricolour, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so tacky, this thing. Well, let's bring back in uh, Maggie Barry from Wellington. I guess, you know, it's a bit like arguing over whether broccoli tastes nice in some ways. I mean, some people will say yes and some people will say no, so it's obviously subjective, but the critics do have a fair point, don't they, in that there wasn't a designer on the panel. There are a lot of designers involved in the process and in the pre-selection part. Nobody will ever like, not everybody's always going to like the flag. You know, the process will be criticised, uh, the design will be criticised, there'll be a lot of carping around that. That's fine. People are entitled to their views and beauty's in the eye of the beholder as broccoli is in the mouth of the eater. Big deal. Uh, the, the issue around this one is that for the first time, New Zealand is the only country in the world, as we were giving women the vote, to allow the people of New Zealand to make the choice. It's always been imposed on them by others. A binding referendum, a double postal referendum that we spent $26 million on, $18 million of which is on the postage, let me say. That's so logical. that's something that needs to be kept that's in mind. It needed to be secure. <laughs> but it is something that is uh, something that's very important. It's a conversation we won't have again in 100 years. So it's worth that amount okay, of money well, to see what New Zealand is worth. And we're giving a choice I'm gonna, to the country. I'm going to move to... I'm gonna move to context and I will start with you Mr Peters if you are just joining us this morning you are listening to a special morning report debate on the flag referendum and uh, some of you are watching this you can do so on rnz.co.nz or you can watch it on Freeview channel 50. Mr Peters if I can pick up there the context for change the why question what do you make of why we are doing this now? Do we have a reason to change? Yes, the Prime Minister decided he was going to have a legacy. Not an economic or social one, but a flag. But the second most important thing is really this. This would have been a near-run thing with a proper process mm. and a decent design. Yeah. I think it would have been a near-run thing because people were looking for, if we're going to change, let's have something exciting that we can believe in. This is a terrible disappointment. Is it the problem that <coughs> there isn't a context for change? I mean, if you look at reasons countries might change their flags, sometimes it's a coup or a revolution or even a significant anniversary. Uh, is yeah, there I a mean, narrative you, you, around you, the change, you, you, a context for that, David? That's right. I mean, you, you can see a scenario where we might have actually moved to becoming a republic, and at that point it would make a whole lot more sense, sense because we yeah. would then be saying, well, let's take stock of what we were, let's consider what it is we are now, and the whole thing would have... I think, produced something, as Winston said, uh, uh, that would have been a near-run thing and, and I think would have given us more clarity. But crucially, you've got to have designers involved in this thing. And there's a real <laughs> irony here that when you look at all of the, the uh, uh, organisations like Fonterra and the Rugby Union and, and, and any decent-sized entity, and every government department we've got for that matter, <laughs> when they want to have um, some kind of image, they don't ask the public to design it for them, they get designers. So People you reckon we should have done this. the sort of, um, I was going to say Frank Bynamarama um, sort of approach, but because I think yeah, he's yeah. taking something pretty similar. Do you think we should have just dictated from on high? No, I don't know. Oh, no. Why didn't we ask the people, would you contemplate a flag change? Now, yeah, you, you that, said no. that was the first question. 
But oh, they wouldn't do that. That's a silly question. No, no, but it's you, not because no. it wouldn't Maggie, have raised it so much. Maggie, you want to What I don't want is I appreciate people talking. Yeah, what I don't want is yes. people talking yes. over well, each other because that's no use to anyone. What I'm going to hear from Mr. Peters, and then I'm going to hear from you, Maggie. I don't want to hear from some junior minister who's been around five minutes who can't understand the colour and that silver is not the option being offered here. Oh, that's a major touch. The Donald Trump of New Zealand politics without the comb over. Maggie came on for some insults here. Now I don't want Orange Ruffy to ruin this program. With the greatest respect, we don't want Orange Ruffy ruining this program this morning. It's Donald on a serious Trump issue. It's $26 million again. of wasted money. Can we take it money. away from the politicians for a second? It is the most important <laughs> thing. It's going to come to being this being politicised, but I think that's happened already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why didn't they ask the real question, yeah. do you want a flag change or not? Yeah, they didn't. I, I, okay, okay. The reason you can't do that is because if you ask people, do you want a flag change, they say, well, what are we going to get? That's their first question when you ask them, because I've done it. Right. Do you want a flag change? And they say, well, what are we going to have instead? So they need to have some options. Okay. And the other thing is, I've had a lot to do with designers and corporate logos and all sorts of things in the past in my business career. And I tell you what, if you look at all the designers and what they were offering and what they're talking about, some of them can't even remember the ones that they offered and they start talking about you can't have a silver fern and people like Smythe and so on have had silver ferns and the ones they were offering. They Very poor memories. Okay, I did promise to bring you back in, Maggie Barry. Isn't it fair, though, to, <laughs> to say that um, this process has been politicised? We've got the Prime Minister wearing the alternative flag on his lapel as well as other ministers. Uh, he made it clear very early on, uh, including yourself, as you're pointing to it now, he, he made it clear very early on, didn't he, that he wanted a silver fern in the design. Now, should he not have perhaps just stood back a little more and, and left this to the people? John Key, me, others, colleagues, uh, one vote among millions. Uh, we're entitled to our views, unlike what Mr Peters was suggesting, uh, that people who are not <laughs> residents shouldn't be allowed to vote. Let's just change the whole voting system, no, shall we, and get rid of democracy. I said citizens. Um, it is a ridiculous notion, a as many of them have been that have been put forward by that party, <laughs> where there is no independence <laughs> thought about bit, this. The politicisation <laughs> of this has come from Good Labour, behind, who wanted Maggie. to see a uh, policy change uh, uh, and a flag change, and now they're at the point where uh, they're going to swallow the dead rat voting for the flag that they don't like in order to make a political point. Uh, there's essentially about politics. That is a shame. That is a shame. Well, let's pick up on the... Certainly, I'll come Labor's to you in a been second, very two-faced about this. There's right, no doubt right, about OK, it. Chris, I'm going to come to David in a second. But to, uh, to pick up back with you, Lizzie, isn't it a fair point that, to make that Maggie Barry is making that because if you go right back it was Labour's policy as well mm -hmm. to change the flag and the Greens also were backing a referendum now New Zealand First nev never did but you had Labour, the Greens and National, now I haven't done the maths but I would imagine that's representing over 80% of uh, voters. Yeah. Now, they all wanted that process, but then when National comes along and does it, they go, well, I'm going to try and bring down uh, the, the Prime Minister. So isn't it fair for Maggie Barry to say, well, actually, the ones who have politicised it are, are the opposition? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, you can't really divorce the issue from the process in this particular example. So, I, I mean, I don't personally know what went on behind, you know, in the halls of, no, but of what Parliament. what don't you like about the process? Well, what I don't like is that you know, as we've spoken about, the, all the design issues, they're basically, um, you know, spending all this money just kind of for absolutely no reason. No one was calling for it, even if the parties had a policy. Well, to be fair, um, Labour Prime Ministers have called from it for, for nine, yeah, since Yeah, but I'm talking about the people. I'm not talking about politicians. I'm talking about the public on the street. Who actually really wanted the flag change? You know, the polls have indicated over generations that we've always had more people in favour of keeping the flag. And, you know, also... On the political side of it, to see our politicians, our elected officials, wearing this new flag design on their lapels, to me just feels like a bit of a slap in the face to the people because this should be the voice of the people, this should be the people's decision. And mm. the honourable thing would have been for these politicians, if it was going to be National's legacy, to go, right, we're going to have a flag change, we're going to keep out of it, what do you want, New Zealand? Well, I don't right. agree because, in fact, leadership is about showing where you stand. And okay, that's what they're doing. David Slack, where do you stand? Show I think some the, leadership, I th please. I, th I think the case has been over. <laughs> overstated here about uh, politicisation of the process. I think there's, I, I entirely agree, there'll be some people who are seeing this as an opportunity to make a vote against the Prime Minister, but I don't see that as a significant part of it. And I would also suggest that if, it, if this were the case, that people are voting on the basis of whether they support this uh, Prime Minister and this government or not, you, it would follow, wouldn't it, given the uh, yeah, huge right. popularity right. they enjoy, that you would be getting yeah, a different okay, outcome. Right. But, you know, for, I, I, object, you know I, I take a political stance on 40 different things in a week, but on this one, 
I'm I'm not at all interested in the political dimension of it. I'm interested in whether this is a decent flag or what not. Are you this is a dog. Right, that's pretty clear. I was going to ask you which way you were going to go, but I think that's pretty clear. Maggie, Bag- Mag- Maggie Barry, I'm going to bring you back in here. And I want to return to some of the, the fundamental arguments and get away from the process, if you like. One of the big arguments that we hear is that the current flag just looks too much like the Australian flag, and it's embarrassing and a little bit humiliating for New Zealand when we're overseas. Is that one of the drivers, in your view, for change? I've spoken to a lot of young people, and to them the the, the wow moment is when they recognise that, uh, for example, when John Key signed the free trade agreement with Korea, it was against the backdrop of the Australian flag. They are very easily mistaken for each other, and when they're actually not flying very high and a bit limp, they're almost indistinguishable, and there's many examples of that. So I think for young people, the sense that we need to have our own identity, that we are New Zealanders, not a a state of Australia, is a really important factor for young people. And, you know, again, when you look at the Canadian look, flag, uh, yeah. when you look at something that was actually a, 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 a symbol of a plant that they really love, it's a stylized right. symbol I'm, like I'm, the Thurlis. Lizzie Marvel in the studio well the is um, making all sorts of gesticulations. Yeah, uh, what, 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 I just uh, think, you know, and, and I, with all due respect um, to the minister, to be telling a young person what young people think is just a little bit galling. No, she's um, just and a lot, what no, she's a lot of told. the people that I and I think I would probably know more young people than the minister. To be fair, I doubt um, that. They they, we get around not, a bit. they are not in favour of this new flag. And it's, it's well, fairly interesting the, because the we are supposedly to, more progressive. The young people well, can I, I talk can to I say, are... half, the, half the people in the polls from the National Party don't want this flag. Mm. That's not, so forget about the, politi- the so-called political. The second thing is... What, what, you don't is, agree it, with it, polls, it though, Mr flag, Peters. You never it, have. It is our flag. Maggie, try and be helpful and not your usual nuisance. Look, oh, look, here's, look, here's look, the fact. What about the fact, what about the fact Mr... This, is, no, this flag is... What about this the fact that this flag design, here, and I'm holding up the, the current flag, is, is pretty similar to the Australian flag and is can often mistaken question? for can it? Can I answer that question? Yeah. We designed that flag in 1902. The Aussies, in a very dingoistic way, have stolen it. No, no, they they adopted it in 1901. No, no, no. No, we did not design it in 1902. It was designed by a British naval officer in 1860. Come on, get your facts right. the adoption of it, not when it was designed. Oh, you said design. Well, design and adoption, right? Okay, so it was a slip of the We'll get the historical, and that's not a slip of the time. It did not become relevant until we adopted it, with the greatest respect. Until we adopted it in 1902, it was not relevant. Now, the Aussies have stolen it. Here's another point. And also, <laughs> the, the Aussies are all talking about going to a republic. Both sides of the house, Turnbull, the other side, yeah. are all talking about going to a republic. Their flag will change automatically. Yeah, it will be uniquely ours then. So let's get, debunk that idea. Oh. And that also, is it really such a big so deal? We should really Do we stick need our head to navel base? Like a dodo. Do we need to navel gaze like and feel? Hang on, hang on, Lizzie. Do we need to navel gaze and feel that we are, you know, um, insignificant compared to Australia? I personally have never felt that there's an issue there. I mean, yeah, okay, there's another dirty great big star on theirs, but when I see this flag, when I fly in from, you know, overseas from singing anthems, when I'm standing there with it behind me, when I'm singing the national anthem for the All Blacks, that's our flag. Not the, you know, this this thing, this tea towel that's sitting there on the table. David, okay, David, I, 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 hang on, I'm going to bring David I, in no, here. I want to address that because, Just because for 50 to 60 years, in fact, more than 60 years, after 1902 when we adopted that flag... We kept using the British Union Jack but for we're everything. Not about Schools that. flew it until 1960. That was 50 years ago. That Jack. was 50 years ago. That's right. irrelevant. Let's, let's bring this. Yeah. Into, oh, let's, oh, 50 years ago is irrelevant. But that flag's this, there for irrelevant. Let's bring this into the into the current day. <laughs> have you got, uh, David, ageist uh, comments. David Slack, if you look at the countries that still have the Union Jack on their flag, we're not in uh, in great uh, company Hawaii. in terms of numbers here, Hawaii. are we? Well, is, is, is the it, Mr. Key has got the Union Jack on its flag, the state flag? What we got Fiji and Tuvalu. Well, Fiji's about to change and it won't have it on, I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm not sure that the uh, the company is <laughs> as real. significant yeah. as the um, what that flag says to us about what we've done, where, where we've been and where we're going. And what? like I said before, you know, I think that probably the point at which you decide to become a republic is the logical point for you to say, OK, mm-hmm. where are we? where is this now taking us and isn't design one of the things that we need to consider? But... Canada well, didn't become a republic after it changed its flag, though, David. No, but what success. I'm saying is it presents an opportunity. What I'm saying is a lot of us are not in favour of being a republic. Maggie, what I'm saying is it presents an op- a, a yeah, much more logical opportunity for very distant for, prospect for, for considering it. Actually, I should put, take you up on something you said earlier on. I really don't buy this proposition that it's a one in a hundred year uh, opportunity. 100% now, Parliament, Parliament has the opportunity, as you well know, to pass a law about anything yeah, it wants at any time when the people actually call for it. That's right, and I think, in fact. 
that there is a mood here. Well, at least there's a <laughs> there's an experience we've been through here now that would actually make it much more viable, I think, for us to have a, another go in two years, four years, six years, fifteen years. Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? Why not? Speaking of time, we are running out of time, so I'm going to go round um, just finally as uh, before we leave it uh, for a prediction about what's going to happen. M Maggie Barry, are you still confident that um, yourself, John Key and the other proponents for change are going to get your way? As a politician, I will go with the will of the people. If they decide that they don't want to change a flag and they don't want this flag, uh, I'll go with it. But I hope that people have considered the arguments and discussion. They've seen it flying now. Uh, they resonate with the silver fern and the southern cross and the black and the fern, and they go with this flag, which is about our modern future, and it's about our nationhood, and it should change, in my view. All right. Chris Mullane, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I think I'd like to go last, because Maggie and I are on the same side of the fence, so try someone else first. <laughs> <laughs> well, Winston Peters, I don't think you're ever shy of coming forward. What do you think is going to happen? Look, this is a referendum which this government and other parties cannot ignore as they have in other referendums where they've just had no time for the people's will. This one they're going to have to uh, abide by and this vote will come in something like 70% for the retention of the present flag because people want their history respected. They think it's a gross waste of money. They think it's a detour and a sideshow to the serious issues of this country. Lizzie? Yeah, I think let the people speak. And I think, you know, given, given what we've seen, I think they're going to retain the flag because really, if we are going to have a new flag, it has to be good enough to represent us. All right. David Slatt? My experience in the media um, has been that some issues don't really exercise people. But this one, man, they has this got they people they so it. excited. <laughs> and I actually think you're going to get a decent sort of a uh, turnout, 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 turnout yeah. for well, this. Well, I think that'd and, be great. Um, I hope that they'll say, nice try, but let's get it okay. right. Okay, quick okay. final word to you, Chris, before okay, we so head very out. quickly, I think get out and vote because a lot of people fought and died for you have the democratic right to and vote, so get, get out and vote. vote. Yeah, absolutely. We can all probably hope and, agree and on that, vote early. And when you vote, vote early, that's right. And vote when early you vote, and vote often. When you uh, vote, right. please, <laughs> please do not be concerned about that changing the flag is disrespectful for those who served and died in relation to that past flag. That is not the case. Look at the silver ferns on the headstones, etc. And finally, uh, New Zealand deserves its own identity. Stand proud on the world stage. Go the fern. OK. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much to Anytime. all of our guests this morning. Uh, to Maggie Barry in Wellington, thank you. And to our guests in the Auckland studio, Winston Peters, Lizzie Marvley, David Slack and Chris Millay. Now, remember that you've got until March the 21st to uh, put that uh, ballot in the mail. And the uh, results are announced around 7 o'clock on Thursday, March the 24th. We'll be back later in the programme with a range of your views on the flag. But for now, back to you in the studio in Wellington, Susie.